Hello again, I am Blunty, and in the last video I talked at some length about AMD's new Threadripper high-end desktop CPUs and the significant advantage their many, many threads provide to what the marketers want you to call megatasking, than what normal people can just call heavy load multitasking. Like, for example, being able to encode videos with handbrake while playing AAA game titles while streaming to Twitch in a high quality, and all without much effort at all. And I talked about the Thermaltake cooler I had on loan with the review kit, and I mentioned that it did very well at keeping things at or under 70 degrees pretty easily, even when under the load of an overclock. Well, what about that overclock? Overclocking Threadripper is done, of course, in much the same way as other Ryzen chips, and if you don't like poking around in the BIOS, you can even do it with a pretty nice app from AMD called Ryzen Master, which works nicely. When I was briefed on Threadripper, AMD told us we should expect Threadripper to be good overclockers. The chips selected were supposed to be the best of their best. And that does seem to bear out, though of course there's always the chance that the review samples we were sent were cherry-picked, of course. So we'll have to wait until retail units are in the wild and in the hands of overclockers to be sure. But I can tell you that even with my extremely limited time with the chips, so not much finesse fine-tuning, and even with an off-the-shelf all-in-one cooler, both chips easily hit 4 GHz. In the case of the 1920X, with its base clock of 3.5 GHz, I got an overclock of 4.1 GHz without even crawling into the deep dive settings for voltages and such. And the result? Well, the Cinebench score kicked up nearly another 9%, the Geekbench multi-core score up another 5%, and 5.5% 5 .5 boost to 5741 for the PC Mark 10 score. It shaved a few minutes off the blender test, about 5% faster in fact. And the same increase under the CPU benchmark for Ashes of the Singularity, almost spot on 5%. And under the Heavy Streamers workload test, running maxed out Overwatch as you can see here, or Watch Dogs 2, and asking for a 1080p 60 frames per second stream and recording, which frankly Threadriver already just kills at, the extra speed on the clocks doesn't do much to the end result really, but it did give the game some extra headroom to keep the frame rate just a bit higher than stock clocks while all this was going on behind it. But as you can also see again on the CPU utilization, there's just fields and fields of room left on the threads for even more work to be done in the background if you like. And again, that's the real magic power of Threadripper. So much room for activities. <laughs> and as for the 1950X, with its denser core load, the stock clocks are a little bit slower at 3.4 GHz, and I got its overclock to a rock-stable 4 GHz without even trying. I did get it to 4.2 GHz, and I got to reliably boot and everything, but under a full 100% pegged workload, things would lock up. So I feel like if I had the time for a more aggressive attempt, more fine-tuning, and perhaps an even better cooler, I don't think it'd be unreasonable to think you can get this chip up to 4.2 and maybe even beyond. But at the easy mode 4 GHz that I did manage to get rock stable, Cinebench popped out a 4% increase score, popping up another 100 plus points from 3,337 to 3,461. And quite frankly, on and on and on that story goes, with every benchmark and test that I just showed you all getting the same kind of 4 to 5% boost up from the 1950X's overclock. So, while the lesser Threadrippers all can struggle a bit with significant overclocking, very few of them being able to pop their head up to 4 GHz and beyond, it seems at first blush at least that AMD's claim that Threadripper will do so easily holds true. Again, we'll have to wait for retail units to be in the wild to be sure, but AMD have been pretty on the level with everything they've done and said about Ryzen across the board so far, so, so I don't think I've got a reason not to trust them on this. So, if you're planning on a Threadripper build with a decent cooling system and you're hoping for some of that sweet, sweet free performance boosting when you're doing something nice and heavy, it's there for you. And if you're a hardcore overclocker hoping to set some records and such, well, I can tease you with this. At the Tech Day press briefing thing, AMD did have some overclockers there working with LN2 Extreme overclocking on the Threadripper chips, and I heard numbers above 5 GHz being shouted excitedly. And I saw a Cinebench score above 4,000 points. So, you know, have fun with that. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.